What's up, what's up there guys? Welcome back. We're back again. Still Dibalin Football Channel. Still Kaiser Chief Football Channel. You know what it is. You know what it is. But today, it's our random thoughts. We're speaking things in Europe. We're speaking developments in Europe. We're speaking European football. But also, there's a lot of things that have been happening. You know, last week, there's been a lot of developments that I think they're worth speaking about. But yeah, before we get into the European developments, European developments, things that we're going to speak about, the sacking of Jose Mourinho, the establishment of the you know European Super League and the improvements that we see with Chelsea Football Club. Of course, that's my favorite team and I've always said that whenever I get an opportunity, I'm going to speak about Chelsea. But yeah, before we do that, let's speak about the, the developments at home. First, on Thursday, Mamelo Sundowns thrashed Orlando Pirates. They did a very good job. They silenced you know, the noisy neighbors. They beat them 4-1. It was, it was very happy. It was a very good one. And I enjoyed the game. Yes, it was a high standard of, of, of football. To be honest, from both the club, from both the teams, we saw a different, you know, as Kaiser Chiefs fans, a highest you know, form of football. There was a you no know, lot of interesting stuff, tactics and, and beautiful football on it all. And then on the weekend, Chaguma did the job. Uh, they silenced another no noisy neighbors. It was, it was just you know good news after good news, and we congratulate Ch uh, Chaguma for reaching you know net bank final. It's, it's a team that has been has been you know under a lot of critics criticism. There's been a lot of administrative issues. There's just been there's just been poorly managed. But for TTM to reach at this this stage of of, of the net bank cup competition, it means a lot. And I think they can only build, they can only move forward. We, I'm very happy, I'm, I'm always happy when, you know, the underdogs are, are, are doing the job. And then going to Europe, the first thing we speak about is Jose Mourinho. A uh, decision was announced that Spurs decided to sack him and, 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 and I think it was a big decision for Spurs. I think this is their biggest sacking in, 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 in their history. I'm not sure because I've... I've I've not been following that much of, of Spurs, but I follow Jose Mourinho. He's a coach that I've admired a lot, a coach that you know, took Chelsea and, and made a big team out of Chelsea, went to Inter Milan, won Champions League. He's been there, you know. He revolutionized football from the tick attack of Pep. And he had to come with a plan on how to, to, to counter-attack or to counter, you know, that, that kind of football. To introduce his own philosophy, defensive philosophy, the counter-attack philosophy. You know, a transition kind of football, and I enjoyed it. I, I I I admired that kind of football because I'm more interested in the defensive side of football. But Jose Mourinho has been a coach that is that has refused to evolve because football has evolved a lot. There's been a lot of developments since you know the 2009 Inter Milan, 20 you know 10 11 Chelsea and all that. I mean, even from Porto, football has changed a lot. It has developed a lot. And the fact that Jose Mourinho has refused to transition and develop with football has been, you know, something that worried me. And that's one thing that made me to lose some sort of interest in him. There are new coaches right now, new tactics right now, beautiful football mixed up with defensive, you know, tactics mixed up with, you know, the whole sort of thing, possession football. So Jose Mourinho has refused to, to evolve. We have seen with Spurs, Spurs has not been a beautiful team to watch. It's not been nice to watch. It's been painful to watch. In fact, without Hurricane, you just don't see where the team is going. In the beginning, there was some sort of, you know, Sun, Kane, you know, sort of combination. But it went on to die out. It went on to, down, to die out. Spurs, you know, became this team that is too reliant on one player. Without Kane, there's no, there's no team and there was just nothing. It was just a mess. And it was always, you know, coming. There was always a decision coming. They decided to, to sack Jose Moreno and... The only concern I have is that they sack him when, you know, I think it's just a game. Just after that game, it's just left with this game. The second game that I was going to play from now is, is the cup final, uh, the Carabao Cup. And it's been pushing. I thought this, this that was going to be an opportunity for Spurs to win a cup. They are playing against Man City. Of course, a very difficult team to beat. But we know Moreno, we know in terms of, of, of him and his second season, never finishes the second season without a silverware. So I had hoped that... They can just give him time, let him play a final against City, and then make a decision after that. But yeah, decision taken. I think it's a good decision for Spurs. There's, there's a lot of, of good coaches out there. But I think what, one thing that might have influenced the decision for Spurs to sack Moreno is Thomas Tuchel, Moez, David Moez, 
and uh, you know Brandon Rogers of, of of Leicester. You look at how Chelsea, how Tuchel has came into Chelsea, how he has you know developed that team. You look at how David Moyes has done with an average team of of West Ham. You look at how Brandon Rogers has been doing with Leicester City as a Spurs manager or hierarchy, a Spurs hierarchy would think, what is wrong with our team? Why is our team not doing as good as West Ham is doing? Why is our team is not doing as good as Leicester is doing? Because look at the team sheet. Look at the team sheet of Spurs and look at the names in that Spurs team. Bale in that team, Son in that team, big names. And you wonder why is this team not doing well? And you are bound to arrive at a decision that the problem is with the manager. And the problem was with the manager. Managers are refusing to grow, they're refusing to change. And the decision was long coming. So yeah, good decision by Spurs. We just wonder who's going to be the next coach. The second thing that we need to speak about in European football, of course, the establishment of, uh, of the, the, the new European Super League. The 12 teams, big teams, top 5, top 6 in England. And then the, the teams in Europe and the, in, in Spain and the other teams, the big four in, 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 in Italy, decided they're going to form a conglomerate, establish a structure, have a competition where they are always you know, into that competition. They'll compete against one another. And then they'll make money, will watch, and then it's going to be a good game. They're deciding to ditch the UEFA you know, Champions League kind of competition. And it's been a talk of the day. In fact, teams in, in, in Germany decided not to join in. The PSG and the teams in France, they're not joining in. And there's a lot of pressure from a lot of structure to say this shouldn't be going on. And the problems and, 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 and the decisions that they are monopolizing the, the football, they want to gain alone, they want to make money alone and stuff like that. And the teams are, the argument is that there's a lot of you know, changes that are done in, 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 in the UEFA Champions League by the structures. And they're not beneficial to the clubs, the big clubs. And the fact that there's COVID-19, you know, there's no sales, ticket sales and stuff like that. And therefore, these clubs are deciding if they can play amongst each other, sell, you know, the broadcasting rights and, and they, they can make money. And there's a lot of money at stake. And football, unfortunately, has become, you know, about business, become about profit, has become about money. And, and those people that are arguing that, yeah, these teams are great and stuff like that, I do understand that. But we would be fools to, to think that UEFA, FIFA and all that, are, are, they, they are not about money or they are eth as ethical or, or, or as saint in football. No, they're not saints. So you hear the, the threats from FIFA, the fact that if players are playing for these teams that are going to be playing, participating in the Super League, they won't be representing the national teams. And you wonder, these players are, con are only, you know, they are only in contract with their, with their teams. They don't make decisions. It's the hierarchy that makes a decision. And why would FIFA now press on players? Why would they punish players from representing the national team? It's dictatorship. It's corruption. It's unethical. And there's nothing, there's nothing good. There's nothing, you know, too colorful about FIFA. There's nothing too colorful with, with Champions League, with UEFA as it is. And the fact that these teams are trying to establish something, Perez, of course, the 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 the, the, the president of Madrid, being you know the one spearheading the whole thing, also is a problem. It's a problem because what's going to happen with the with the small teams? What's going to happen with Leicester that is performing very well? That is not part of the top, you know, the the usual you know big six and all that. What's going to happen with with West Ham? It's performing very well now. It was going to be an opportunity for them to get into the Champions League to get to face the bigger teams. Those are the things that are being said. I'd like to hear from you what you think about these things. Otherwise, personally, I don't have a problem that much with the Super League. I think it's going to be interesting for us to watch as fans. You know, always Madrid, Juventus, Chelsea, the big teams always facing each other. It's going to be an interesting thing to watch. For me, I, I don't have really have that much of a, of a problem. I'd like to hear from you what you think about this kind of developments but yeah if you're new in the channel i'd like to encourage you to subscribe to turn on the notification button and yeah let's 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 enjoy the comment section let's enjoy and i'd like to hear from you I'd, I'd really like to hear from you i'm still learning about this whole thing and the last thing i need to speak about is the biggest thing is that chelsea is doing the wonders it's doing wonders and people have been writing us have wrote have been writing us off people have counted chelsea off out people have thought there is no way we're not going anywhere and they are the, the firing of lampard the hiring of thomas tuchel people criticized it more especially british media you know british media they backed up lampard they were had a problem with thomas tuchel and this guy arrives and just three months just three months yes he has done a lot with just three months he's managed to beat pep Guardiola, to beat jagan klopp carlo ancelotti 
you know, twice as beaten Diego, Diego Simeone. And you, you wonder where Chelsea can go. And with now, the problem problems with the Super League and the threats to stop the Champions League and, you know, to, to, to cut out the teams that are participating in, in, in the Super League. It's just disappointing because we had thought and we had hoped that there's going to be a Chelsea versus a Real Madrid. It was going to be a very good fixture. And Chelsea was going to go through with hit and with rest, you know, Manchester City without any struggles. If you check the opportunities created in the game against Man City, if you check the tactics applied by Thomas Tuchel, you'll realize that this Chelsea team is very difficult to play against. When the man arrived, he said he's going to build a team that is very scary to play against, and he has done it only within three months. Only in three months, he has done it with this average squad, with this squad that people said, yeah, he's still young, he's still new, Lampard is still trying to combine and all that and all that. He was struggling, the very same squad that was struggling. Thomas Tuchel does wonders with it. Now, FA final, Champions League semi-final, and we're going to reach final in Champions League if it, indeed it continues. And I'm very happy, I'm very happy with the developments in PSL, developments in, in, in Europe as, as, as far as Chelsea. But yeah, I'd like to hear from you uh, what you think about you know, Chelsea, Thomas Tuchel as a coach and 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 uh, what we think about the super league otherwise yeah it's random thoughts it's still the football channel because i football channel and it's love and peace <laughs>